For 20 years, the IIHF has honored the greatest contributions to international hockey. An honor that's recognized in a special section of the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto. With trophies, memorabilia, and the list of those inducted into the International Ice Hockey Federation Hall of Fame. Now entering its third decade, the Hall gets eight new members today. Good morning. Guten Tag. Bonjour. Welcome to the 2017 IHF Hall of Fame induction ceremony. My name is Gord Miller. I've been proud to be an international hockey broadcaster for more than 25 years now and to be your master of ceremonies here today at the German Sport and Olympic Museum, this beautiful facility that honors some of the greatest German athletes of all time, Boris Becker, Katarina Witt, Michael Schumacher, and of course my personal favorite, Gert Mueller. We are here to honor eight individuals whose contributions to their sport span more than just their seven countries. They have truly given to the game around the world. Ruggiero, the American veteran. Back in shot score. This is so lustig when I frech is, girl. So he's not frech. So they can see. Bemüdig, dass du so spät zu deinem Papa. Du meinst das was? It's going to be a break. It is Joe Sakic scores. Gio Sakic scores. He's all by himself. He's only got the one man to beat. He's beaten him twice, three times. What a goal! What a goal! Tony Hand, brilliant. qui sont là, qui pour certains sont retenus pour la première fois dans l'équipe senior, montrent qu'ils ont des réelles ambitions à la fin individuelle et, et de faire partie du collectif pour les prochains championnats du monde et Jeux Olympiques. wieder hier, hier gesessen. Ich glaube, ich habe hier gesessen und äh, Miroslav Sikora hat hier gesessen. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set to begin. To start our proceedings, please welcome the president of the IAWHF, Dr. Brendan Fazell. Thank you, thank you, Gorb. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to this uh, exceptional place, I would say the IHF. Uh, Hall of Fame induction ceremony. As, as this year we have really an exceptional uh, class of inductees with Olympic champions, Stanley Cup champions, world champions. And uh, as, as a very special day here today, I would also like to thank the uh, French Ice Hockey Federation and the German Ice Hockey Federation for organizing a, a very, very great uh, world championship, having over nearly 700,000 spectators and having two great finals also for this afternoon. I wish you a very, very nice day and uh, a great day for hockey. Thank you very much.
We'd like to take this opportunity to welcome viewers around the world on television and on IHF.com who are able to enjoy today's ceremony. The IHF Hall of Fame began in 1997 as a way to celebrate more than a century of the game being played. And over the last 20 years, it has honored some of the greatest names and honored the greatest moments in the history of the sport. great moments, great players, and we can't wait to see what the future begin, what the future brings. And now, let us begin. At the 1983 World Junior Championship in Javla, Sweden, Team Finland put together three players who had never played together before, and in so doing, changed the course of Finnish hockey. Those three players, Vili Peltinen, Yuri Lettinen, and Saku Koivo, became the backbone of Finnish national teams for a decade and a half. From the moment he met Saku Koivo, Yuri Lettinen said he knew he'd be not just a great player, but also a tremendous leader. And so he was in the NHL, for his country. Every time he stepped on the ice, he showed courage and heart, and showed even more when faced by challenges off the ice. From Turku, Finland, Saku Koivu. One of Finland's greatest competitors, a marvelous blend of skill, heart, leadership, and perseverance. Saku Koivu's career lasted nearly two decades in the NHL and internationally, with many great moments. Bronze in the 94 Olympics, silver a few months later at the World Championship, then history the following year, as Koivu helped the Finns win their first ever World Championship gold medal. Later in 1995, he began a great career in the NHL with the Montreal Canadiens. He wore the captain C for the Finns at the 1998 Olympics as they beat Canada for the bronze medal. One year later, Koivu would become the first European captain in the history of the Canadians and hold the honor for 10 years. He's also remembered for what he had to overcome, a variety of injuries and health concerns, including non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which kept him out for most of an entire season. But Koivu would return. He led Finland to silver in the 2004 World Cup and silver in the 06 Olympics after a narrow loss to Sweden in the final. In all, he won eight medals on the international stage and finished his NHL career in Anaheim after more than 1,100 games. Small in stature, 
but a giant of the game for his skill and dedication, Saku Koivu. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the player category inductee, Saku Koivu. Dear Mr. President, Council Members, Ladies and Gentlemen, this is a true honor, and I'd like to thank Mr. René Fassel, IIHF, for recognizing my career. Also want to congratulate Angela, Uwe, Joe, Temu, Dieter, Tony, and Patrick for your amazing careers. I owe my success to a lot of people that played a key role during my journey. I'm grateful forever to Vladimir Yurzinov and TPS organization for having the ability to recognize and feed my strength at key times in my youth. I want to thank the Montreal Canadiens for drafting me, providing a wonderful place to begin my NHL career. The Anaheim Ducks for giving me an opportunity to play with some amazing players and an amazing team. As it happens, my international career began in 1993 in Germany. I ended up playing for Finland in seven world championships and four Olympic games. And it seems that I've come full circle, being back in Germany and being honored for my career. Thank you, Finnish My Hockey Federation. And my teammates. It has been an immense privilege for me to represent Finland. And the success that we had together gave me confidence when it was needed and played a critical role in my career. Furthermore, I was blessed to be partnered with some great people, like my agent, the late Don Beasley, and my <coughs> longtime trainer, Kyösti Lampinen. Mom and Dad, Mikko, Hanna, Ilona, and others. I would have never been able to do it alone. But with your support and love throughout my life, we succeeded. Love you very much. Kiitos. Thank you. Heart and courage, always. Thank you, Saku. In women's hockey, body checking is not allowed, but body contact is permitted. And no one understood that difference and walked that line more carefully than our next inductee. Angela Ruggiero first played for the US Women's National Team as a teenager. Her teammate, Cameron Granato, said she had a smile that could light up the dressing room and a stare that could stop an opponent cold. 
She was a one-of-a-kind player, a groundbreaking defenseman, and a player whose contributions continue to this day as she continues to break down barriers. An IHF Hall of Famer now, Angela Ruggiero. From Panorama City, USA, Angela Ruggiero. One of the greatest women to play the game, a rugged defenseman who rose to prominence as a teenage girl from California. Angela Ruggiero debuted with the U.S. national team as a 17-year-old at the 1997 Women's World Championship and was the youngest member of the team at the 1998 Olympics, the inaugural event for women's hockey. Ruggiero helped her team stun Canada in the gold medal game. In 2004, she won the Patty Kazmaier Award as the top women's player in U.S. college hockey. The following year, the U.S. met Canada again in the final of the World Championship. It was Ruggiero's shootout goal that clinched the gold medal for the Americans, giving them their first world title. She went on to three more world championships, Olympic bronze in 2006 and silver in 2010. And even after her retirement the following year, Ruggiero has stayed involved in the sport as an executive with the International Olympic Committee and the IIHF Athletes Committee. And in 2015, she was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto. Angela Ruggiero. The IHF, USA Hockey, and hockey fans around the world were saddened to hear last week of the news that Angela's father, Bill, passed away suddenly back in the United States. She is unable to be with us today, but we are very pleased and honored to have her brother, Billy, with us today. Billy? Thank you, Gordon. Um, on behalf of Angela, um, to congratulate the other inductees. Um, as Gordon mentioned, our father passed away. Um, huge, huge fan, supporter of us um, through our hockey and our lives. Um, and I think Ange took a lot of comfort that during his last days, um, some of the, the broadest moments he had was actually talking and bragging about this award to everybody. So um, that was pretty fun for us. Um, uh, so, thank you, Dad. We love you. We miss you. Um, to the IHF, um, Angela's um, thanking you, USA Hockey, um, USOC, Dave Ogren, Digger, Dave Fish, um, our teammates at Chilt Rosemary Hall, Harvard, USA Hockey, our childhood coach, Scott Plumer from Pasadena, California, Ben Smith, USA Hockey, Katie Stone from uh, Harvard University. Um, Angela, we love you. Uh, very deserving of, of this award. Right. Thank you. Billy, thank you, and thank you for coming. It would be easier with our next inductee to describe what he hasn't done. It would take less time. He was a great player who became an official, a coach, a manager, an executive, a head of his federation, an Olympic executive, all of that in a career that spanned more than a half a century. It is impossible, unthinkable, to think about Austrian hockey without Dieter Kalt. From Klagenfurt, Austria, Dieter Kalt. He's been the face of Austrian hockey for more than a half century. Dieter Kaut was a star player during the 1960s in the Austrian League. 
On the national side, he led Klagenfurt to five championships in six years. Internationally, Kelt first represented his country at the 1962 World Championship and played in every major IIHF event but one between 62 and 72. He was Austria's captain at two world championships and wore the sea in the 1968 Olympics. After retiring, he worked as a referee and later a coach and became a team leader with the Austrian Ice Hockey Federation in charge of sport development. In 1996, he became president of the Federation, a position he'd hold for the next two decades, retiring last year. He's also a longtime member of the Austrian Olympic Committee. He passed on his passion for the game to his son, Dieter Jr., who also had a brilliant career, playing in 13 world championships and three Olympics. The legacy of an Austrian hockey great. Dieter Kalt. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the IHF Hall of Fame, the great Dieter Kalt. Mr. President, council members, ladies and gentlemen, the induction to the IIHF Hall of Fame is a highlight in my hockey life. More than 40 years, I'm in different positions involved in ice hockey. The last 20 years as a president of the Austrian Ice Hockey Federation. This remarkable event today, the induction, is an honor for me, but also what I feel a recognition for all what we have done for the development in ice hockey in our federation. We organized world championships. We organized women world championships. We organized European under 18, world, worldwide under 20, Olympic qualification games, and so on. We only could do this because we had the big support from our president, and from the council members, also for the delegates. You know, Austria is a small country and we have a small base of hockey players. So other nations like uh, Italy, Slovenia, Hungary have the same problems. So a few years, years ago, we decided to organize an international championship now, we have five European nations who take part on this championship. And I'm proud to say that we have uh, between 80 and 100 games live covered from TV. That's really important for the development of our sport and for the publicity of our sport in our country. Not only in our country, in all countries. So I'd like to say from this stage on, thank you very much to all delegates and especially to the council who supported us for so many years. The next step, what we did is two years ago, we also 
organized a championship under 20 and under 18. The goal of these championships are only, it's easy to say, it's only to develop our players, young players, on a higher level for international events. Coming to the end, Mr. President, I'd like to say thank you again to everybody who supported Austrian ice hockey, especially to the President René and to all members of the committee who selected me that they had the opportunity to be here uh, today. Hockey is my life, a part of my life. And I'm proud that I could be a member of the international hockey family for so many years. Mr. President, good luck for the future. Please take care of our sport again, like you did in the past. And I hope to see you again. Thank you. Our next inductee epitomizes what the game is all about. Grace, brilliance, and humility are all words that describe him very well. His longtime friend and teammate, Rob Blake, said of Joe Sackick, he does everything the right way every day. And that work ethic led Joe Sackick to the pinnacle of the sport at every level. And in the big moments, he was at his best. The NHL's all-time leader in playoff overtime goals Joe Sackick is a champion in every respect, and now a member of the IHF Hall of Fame. From Burnaby, BC, Canada, Joe Sackick. He was a winner from start to finish at every level of hockey. Joe Sackick is one of the few members of the Triple Gold Club, winning World Junior Gold in 1988, followed by two early appearances in the World Championship, getting a silver in 1991, then helping Canada win it all in 94, their first world title in 33 years. Sackick was drafted in the NHL by the Quebec Nordique and became the quiet leader of a team of young stars that came of age when the franchise moved to Colorado for the 95-96 season. The captain scored 51 goals and a career-high 120 points and was the playoff MVP as the Avalanche went on to win the Stanley Cup. Five years later, Colorado won the Cup again. And in 2002, Sackick played a key role in ending another Canadian hockey drought when they beat the U.S. in Salt Lake City to win their first Olympic gold in men's hockey since 1952. And it was Sackick who scored two goals in that gold medal game. He later won the World Cup and captained Canada at the 06 Olympics before retiring in 2009 with more than 1,700 points in 20 NHL seasons. Inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 2012, Joe Sackick. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the IHF Hall of Fame, Joe Sackick. Mr. President, Renee Foss, thank you for that phone call. Uh, what a tremendous uh, honor it was to receive that. It was a great day, great day for myself, my family. Um, and it's an honor to be uh, uh, in this class with this uh, tremendous athletes and, and, and builders. So, Saku, I know Angela's not here, uh, Dieter, Tony, Patrick, Tamo, and, and Yui, who uh, we really started together with his uh, shootout goal, or no, sorry. Overtime goal, triple overtime goal that uh, won our first championship together, and uh, you know, it all took off from then. Uh, like I said, it's a, a tremendous honor being here. Um, I have so many people to thank. Uh, 
really Hockey Canada, giving me that opportunity. Uh, showed faith in me from the start, uh, got a chance to represent my country uh, for the first time in the 1988 uh, World Junior Championships in, in, in Russia. And, and four months before that, I actually, probably the best hockey to ever watch was the 87 Canada Cup and, and the one that won three games in Canada won 6-5. And then to, to, to really understand what it meant to, to put your, your, your country's jerseys on and represent your country, it's uh, what a different feeling. And, and to be able to play in the World Championships, Olympics and, and World Cups, um, you know, there's, there's nothing like it. So I'm very fortunate. All my teammates, um, I had an opportunity to play with some of the best players to ever play the game, and uh, I learned a lot from those guys. So uh, it was very humbling playing for your country. Um, my family, uh, my parents, um, I thank them for giving me an opportunity as a kid uh, to play this game. And the game's given me everything, and I thank them for that, uh, that opportunity. Uh, my family, uh, my son Mitchell was not here. Uh, my, my son Chase, my daughter Cameron, uh, thank you. And, my wife, my wife Debbie, um, been there every step of the way. Couldn't do it without her, and uh, thank you, and I love you. Um, have a great night, and uh, thank you for this honor. Thank you, Joe. Three years ago, the IHF began honoring players from smaller countries who have made great contributions to the sport of hockey. Sometimes they got overlooked, which is why the IHF began the B.B. Toriani Award, named after one of the legends of the early days of Swiss hockey. In 1911, Richard B.B. Torriani was one of the earliest European hockey stars. He played for the Swiss in the 1928 Olympic hockey competition in his hometown of Samaritz, winning a bronze medal. Torriani also took part in seven world championships for Switzerland in the 1930s, winning four medals. Along with Hans and Pick Catini, Torriani played on the celebrated Nile line on the Swiss national team, one of the most famous and productive forward lines of the early era. In 1948, the Olympic Winter Games returned to his hometown of Samaritz, and Torriani was given the honor of taking the Olympic athletes oath, the first hockey player to do so at the Winter Olympics. Torriani went to his third Olympics as a player. In addition, the Swiss finished third in 1948, giving him bronze medals 20 years apart in the Olympics. Torriani was a member of the first IAHF Hall of Fame class in 1997. I was a young sportscaster in Edmonton, Canada, where the Oilers had assembled a powerhouse. And one year in training camp, Glenn Sather announced that he was inviting the Scottish Wayne Gretzky to come and try out. Well, we all went down to the rink to see this curiosity. It turns out he was more than a curiosity. He was a terrific player who belonged there and everywhere he played. It is fair to say that very few players in the history of the game play better longer than Tony Hand. From Edinburgh, Scotland, Tony Han. He was the great one of Great Britain. Tony Han played at the highest level of British hockey for 32 years. He started with the Murrayfield Racers of the BHL in 1983 at the tender age of 14 and played internationally on several occasions such as Olympic qualification in 1993 and many world championships, including the last time Britain appeared in the A pool, the top level, in 1994. In all, Han played in 91 IIHF tournament games. He later spent 14 years as a player coach, most notably with the Manchester Phoenix, for whom he became a full-time head coach after finally retiring in 2015 at the remarkable age of 47. 
he scored more than 4,000 points in his 32-year career and became the first ice hockey player ever honored with the member of the Order of the British Empire. Tony Hand. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the 2017 B.B. Torriani Award, Tony Hand. and I hope everyone understands my Scottish accent. It's uh, something typical to understand. Uh, Mr. President, uh, Council Members, distinguished guests, I'm honoured and privileged to be here today uh, in such esteem. Uh, it's just overwhelmed uh, to be invited to this. When I was uh, going to... I haven't really made a speech. I just thought I'd just speak from my heart. Uh, I started playing hockey when I was nine-year-old. Uh, my father passed away when he was... Uh, when I was seven, and my mum, she brought us up, and she's, this is the sacrifice that she made to get to this year. It's such an honour, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to thank the, the IHF Council members uh, for the nominee. Uh, I'd like to thank my teammates, uh, my coaches, the ISOC UK, uh, the fans who have supported me through, through my career. Uh, it's just such an honour to be here, and this is a pinnacle of my career, uh, to finally get to the stage you would never ever dreamed of. I'd like to congratulate Mr. Bazell, Riedel and Tardif for a fantastic World Championships here. It's been absolutely first class. Uh, I'd also like to congratulate my fellow inductees. Uh, it's an honour to be sitting beside you guys. Uh, I really appreciate uh, being here. and. Uh, as you say, my family, uh, sorry, my wife, uh, my, Melissa, my son, Paul, and daughter, daughter Sarah, uh, they're not here today, uh, but as you say, uh, we got, I'm just so overwhelmed to be here. Uh, my brothers, Paul and David, uh, and as you say, I just, as, I'd like to finish there because I say I'm just overwhelmed right now. So uh, thank you, Mr. President, I really appreciate it. Thank you. A kilted player in the IHF Hall of Fame is long overdue. Congratulations, Tony. Since 1998, the IHF has awarded the Paul Loic Trophy to an individual whose outstanding contribution to the IHF and international hockey deserves recognition. The award is named after the first IHF president, Paul Loic. is named in honor of one of the most influential figures in the early days of international hockey. Born in Brussels in 1888, Paul Loic was a veteran of both world wars and was a key figure in the development of hockey in the early 20th century. A player on the Belgian national team, he took part in the first Olympic hockey competition in Antwerp in 1920. Loic then became a highly regarded referee, working international games for 17 years, officiating in four Olympics and six world championships. He also founded the International College of Referees. While still an official, Loic was elected the first IIHF president in 1927, a position he would hold for 20 years. Loic was a key player in expanding the world championship, making it an annual event and turning it into a truly global competition. Also ensuring that hockey became a cornerstone sport at the Olympic Winter Games, a legacy that lives on today.
Boyk also saw the game spread widely, saw the United States join Canada as an early international powerhouse, and worked to grow the game in Europe and around the world. Upon his retirement as IAHF president in 1947, Boyk saw the world championship expand to eight teams. In 1961, Boyk was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame as a builder and was part of the IAHF's inaugural Hall of Fame class in 1997. This year's winner of the Paul Loic Award is a legend in French hockey. And consider how far it's come. More than a decade in the top group at the IHF World Championship. In the last 10 years, France has beaten Russia, has beaten Canada, and this year, for the first time, defeated Finland. And speaking to players from the French team this year who talked about playing in front of capacity crowds in Paris in the World Championship, they talked about the fact that that, just a few years ago, would have been unimaginable to them. That success is due in large part to this year's winner of the Paul Loic Award, Patrick Franchetter. From Lille, France, Patrick Franchetter. It's a career that started on the ice, moved behind the bench, and continues to this day as a hockey executive. Patrick Franchetter has been involved in French hockey for nearly a half century. He turned pro at the age of 18, and after that rookie season, played at his first of eight world championships in 1967. Shortly after, he'd become a player coach. In 1984, he joined Bordeaux and was later named the coach of France's national team, winning C Pool in 1985, then moving up to B Pool, where they've remained ever since. After retiring as a player, Franchetter became an executive, French team director, assistant sports director, president of the Bordeaux Club, and IIHF chairman for European tournaments. He also served as France's general manager for many Olympics and world championships, including their stunning upset of Russia in 2013. One of the pillars of French ice hockey. Patrick Franchetter. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2017 winner of the Paul Wick Award, Patrick Franchetter. I'm not uh, able to, to recite them. Uh, Mr. President, Cheroni, dear council member, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to be here and receive this uh, prestigious award, the Paul Loic Award. Uh, as you might know, and as it has been told, Paul Loic was a player, president of his federation, referee, later president of the IHF. This reminds me of someone. First of all, I would like to thank uh, President Fazel and the uh, ad hoc committee for this nomination in such a wonderful uh, group. It's also a great honor to be rewarded by my second family, the IHF, hockey family. During all these years devoted to hockey, I've met outstanding people from uh, Miro Schubert to Jan Oköyd, Vincent, De Fitzpatrick to Urs Lichtner, Kimo Leinonen, Oran Sederer, and so many other council members and IHF staff who work uh, very hard for ice hockey. The list is too long to name all these great people. I have also a thought for my first national team coach, Pete Laliberté, who put me on the right tracks, which led me here today. And uh, it's also funny because my first camp as a junior with the national team was in Köln, Cologne. 
I have dedicated my entire life to ice hockey. Therefore, I would like to uh, thank my family present here for their passions and support. Traveling abroad as a player, coach, or manager. This award is theirs too. This position gave me the opportunity to discover many countries and meet so many incredible people. I uh, say a word also for the French Federation, born about 10 years ago, and its president, Luc Tardif, who did a tremendous word for all these years to bring the Federation almost from the scratch to the World Championship. And it was a great success in Paris. Retired from my official position, I still keep an eye on the ice hockey, and sometimes more. The hockey world, as a passion, is a kind of virus you cannot read of. Once again, thanks to uh, René Fazel, the IHF, for this prestigious induction. Congratulations to the other inductees who entered the IELFM today. Thank you again. Long life to IHF. And vive la France. The Finnish Flash. Did any hockey player ever have a nickname that better fit than Teemu Salani? We all know about his playing career, but to get a sense of him, I called his friend and teammate, Paul Correa, and said, what would you say about Teemu? And Paul stopped for a second and said, we should all live our lives like Teemu Salani. We should all enjoy life like Teemu, we should all smile like Teemu, and we should all make other people's lives better like Tamo. He was a brilliant National Hockey League player with a speed and a shot that electrified fans and terrified opponents. But most of all, he was a great Finnish international, the all-time leader in Olympic points, and a man who made Swomi a chant heard around the world. From Helsinki, Finland, Tamu Salani. He is arguably the greatest Finnish player ever. Teemu Salani represented his country at the World Juniors, the World Championship, and most notably, the Olympics, where he first appeared in 1992 and tied for the goal-scoring lead with seven. Later that year, he made his NHL debut in Winnipeg, going on to score an amazing 76 goals in what is still the greatest rookie season in league history. He scored nearly 1,500 points in 21 seasons, highlighted by a Stanley Cup title with Anaheim in 2007. But his international achievements make him stand out even more. In 1998, his second Olympics, he helped the Finns beat Canada to take the bronze medal. A year later, silver at the World Championship. An Olympic silver in 2006, narrowly missing out the gold after losing to Sweden. At the age of 37, he helped Finland to bronze at the 2008 World Championship. And more incredibly, did it again in Sochi at the 2014 Olympics at the age of 43. Solani was named the tournament MVP and became the only one ever to play in the Olympics six times. One of the best ever on either side of the Atlantic. The Finnish Flash, Temu Solani. Ladies and gentlemen, inducted in the player category in 2017, Tebu Salani. So much. Uh, I remember when uh, Mr. President called me. I was playing golf in California, and I was wondering why he's calling me when I'm actually trying to make some birdies. Uh, 
it was a very pleasant phone call. I'm so honored about that phone call and so honored to be here. And especially with other hockey legends, Saku and Angela, Dieter, Joe, Tony, Patrick and Uwe. This is just unbelievable honor. I remember when I was a little boy in Finland, my dream was to play in the top league in Finland. And uh, maybe if everything goes perfectly, maybe in a national team. NHL was a little fantasy for me. I, I didn't expect that I'm going to ever reach in that level. But uh, if somebody would told me that when I was a little boy that what kind of career I would have, it would be hard to believe. Three years ago when I retired and while I was playing, I, I didn't really have time to think about everything what has happened over the years. Now, last three years, I have. And uh, I'm so thankful and humble about everything what has happened and how lucky I have been for so many different ways. First of all, obviously my parents, I, I can't uh, thank the, them enough about giving me a chance to play this game and go after my dreams. Without them, I would not be here to, today. Obviously, over the years, I've been playing with unbelievable hockey players. Uh, they have helped me so much and uh, make my job so, so much more easier. I want to really thank everybody. I have Joe and, and Saku here. You guys have been a very big part of my career, so thank you. Also, the coaches and trainers. You know, I've always been in good hands, and, uh, and like I said, I'm, I feel very lucky. Also, I want to thank Finnish Ice Hockey Federation, our national team. Mr. Kaleva Kummola, he's a, I always call him a Finnish mafia. And uh, <laughs> he has always treated the players like, like they own. And uh, he has been honored to put this jersey for so many years, six Olympics, over t uh, 28 years. And uh, you can't describe the feeling when you put this jersey on and you play for your own country. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm very thankful. And also the Finnish fans, there's a lot of people that they have helped me over the years. Uh, it has been an unbelievable journey, and uh, thanks for everybody who has helped me so much. Also, uh, I want to thank my, my wife and my four, ki four kids. You guys are the most important thing in my life, and uh, we have experienced great things together. And uh, now when I'm not playing, you know, I, I try to give those years back what I was busy, and. Uh, so far, we have done a great job, and uh, like Court said, I try to live the life every day and, uh, and keep smiling, and uh, sometimes it's a little harder, but uh, I have been very happy, and, uh, and you guys are a big part of that. You know, I have always been able to do things what I love to do, and uh, I think that's what produces happy people. So thanks for everything, and uh, like I said, it's a great honor. Our final inductee is a giant in every sense of the word. A big man with a big shot who threw big hits wherever he played. But he was so much more than that. Uwe Krupp broke down barriers for German players and became one of the first stars from his country in North America. And when his career was over, gave back as a coach of his national junior and national men's team program. And today he comes full circle. He grew up 10 minutes from here. And today, Uwe Krupp is honored here as a member of the IHF Hall of Fame. From Cologne, Germany, Uwe Krupp. Regarded as the finest player Germany's ever produced, Uwe Krupp was an imposing defenseman, and yet he was a fluid skater who excelled at bringing the puck out of his zone. Krupp was drafted into the NHL by Buffalo in 1983, but stayed in Germany until 1986 after a brief but impressive showing at the World Championship. He played in more than 700 games over 14 seasons in the NHL with five different teams. The highlight coming in 1996 when he scored the Stanley Cup winning goal for the Colorado Avalanche in double overtime, the first German ever to win the Cup. He'd win again with Detroit six years later, but was forced to retire shortly after because of injuries that compromised his career. 
Krupp returned to Germany to coach junior and senior teams, leading the program from the 2006 Winter Olympics through the 2011 World Championship. He started as a German pioneer in the NHL, made history, and returned home to teach a new generation of players what he had learned. Uwe Krupp. Ladies and gentlemen, Germany and Cologne's own Uwe Krupp. I get the job of wrapping this up. Um, I got on this boat in the morning and uh, I was all feeling really good, steady, sturdy, and uh, I'm watching all these presentations here and um, seeing all these unbelievable careers uh, in pictures. Uh, makes you slowly fall apart a little bit when you know it, your time's coming up a little bit later in the program. First of all, I want to begin by Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, IHF Council, for this honor. Um, it's truly a privilege, and um, um, I think uh, the other guys have already said it. It's an unbelievable group, and I, I can't say more enough about how humbling it is to be inducted in a group with such uh, um, unbelievable careers and individuals that, uh, that have done so much to hockey in so many different roles. Um, uh, hockey. Um, and life has many different chapters. And I want to begin by uh, thanking a few people early on that have been um, uh, really important to me in my upbringing. Um, first of all, I grew up, like as Gord mentioned, a few minutes from here. And um, the coaches that touch you in your early years, the people that you work with, uh, leave a big impression, but nobody left a bigger impression than Detlef Langemann, who's here today, <clears throat> a retiree, the first captain of the um, team here in Cologne, and who uh, um, he formed a whole generation of Cologne boys, and I was one of those guys, and uh, I think I would have never um, continued playing hockey if it wasn't for somebody like Detlef who showed us the way early on. The kindness of the people that I've experienced in Buffalo uh, in my first uh, step in the NHL um, was an amazing experience, and um, it continued on. Again, very, very fortunate and very privileged. I feel very privileged and fortunate to have been associated and uh, met with so many great individuals that were able to take this awkward kid from Cologne, Germany, um, the first German who come to North America and um, help him his way and learn how to play hockey in, in the best league in the world. Uh, Along the way, you meet some very, very unique individuals. One of them, one who's here in a, in a very large role, especially at this World Championship, and he's played a large role in my life. As a young player, my first World Championship in 1986, I was playing in a veteran German team in Moscow, and I was sitting by myself in the locker room, and the average age of that team must have been about 29. And here's a 19-year-old kid, and there's one guy that said every day, asked me how I was feeling. Big guy, how's it going? You know, how do you like the food? And um, that was Franz Reindl. And he, uh, you know, t talked to me every single day, um, made me feel welcome in, a, in, this, in this really close team as a sort of a newcomer. And uh, Franz was an important guy also to take this next step after my hockey career and help me, uh, um, help me along into coaching, give me an opportunity with the German national team. I want to wrap this up and not make it too long. Um, obviously, there's a few people in all these different chapters and all these segments that are always there. Um, the one person who's always been there is my mom. She is uh, 
uh, worked four jobs to allow this kid that had kept growing like a weed and work growing out of skates and hockey equipment to make sure that I could have these things. And uh, mom, thank you. And um, again, it's, a, it's really an honor to be here today. And um, I'm here today and have the people that are closest to me in my life. Claire, oops, I love you. I love our kids. Bjorn, you're the man. I couldn't be any proud of you. And thank you very much. Thank you, Uwe. Our congratulations to all eight of our honorees today. Um, our thanks to the organizing committees in Paris and Cologne for a terrific world championship. We wish good luck to the teams today playing for the bronze and gold medals. And we hope that we can take as an example from these players and these teams what the game is all about. The spirit of friendly competition, of goodwill, and of loving this sport. And let us all keep putting the sport first and make sure we love the game of hockey. Thank you very much, and congratulations once again.